Hey everyone, welcome back. So I kind of want to make this a little more structured. Um, I know the parts have kind of just been kind of coming out as they, they come out. And for me, I've kind of just been rolling with the punches as it were. I have not been able to drive very much of what direction I'm going because I've kind of been working through the issues. Uh, the wiring wasn't really planned. The problems with the engine was, was certainly a detour before all of that happened. So at this point, I kind of know what direction I need to go in so I can give you a little bit better synopsis before we actually get down into it. So at this point, the engine runs. We've checked everything. Mechanically, this engine is ready to go. So that's great news. And what that means is that we can move on to an actual purpose. The next step being getting the engine in the car. So the engine bay, as you saw, it's already good to go. It's painted, it's, it's ready. I need to put the bell housing on. So I need to get the blower off, get it off of the engine stand, get it on the floor so I can do a run out measurement. Um, so if you're unfamiliar with aftermarket bell housings, you can get offset dowels that kind of shift the, the bell housing one way or another so that everything bolts up and it's in alignment. So that's gonna take me a little bit of time. I've never done that before. I've watched quite a few videos on it. it seems pretty straightforward. Unfortunately, what will put me behind is if I need offset dowels, which I don't have. So we'll go from there. So you're gonna see a lot of that on time-lapse and then when and if I ever find anything exciting to show you, I'll jump back with you. See ya. Hi, so here's an update to SFI Bell Housing Quartermaster. I really haven't found anybody's info online, so useful info for somebody. Originally, when I did the measurements, it was off by like 12 thou. It was a little less than that in spots, so I, I opted to get the 7 thousandths um, offset dowels. So I put those in, as you can see there. These are the Morosos. The actual part number is 37934, okay? So that's these guys. These require a set screw to be drilled into your engine. Not a huge fan, but it is what it is. You kind of want to lock them in place once you figure this out. So I did that, as you can see right there. And on both sides, obviously. Anyway, so I threw these guys in and where I was a little under 12 thou off, I am now, well, let's see, we're at two thousandths, five thousandths, six, six and a half, five, three, and this is my zero point. So good news, I'm basically within spec, I mean, you know, one and a half thousandths is probably not something I'm going to try and mess with. These dowels have a screwdriver slot built into them. I don't know if you can see that or not. You can't. Uh, anyways, they have a screwdriver slot in them. But once they're driven in, you can't turn them. So you'd have to drive them out and then turn them just for a 1.5 thou. I'm not going to mess with it. So if you look at my zero point right here, this would be zero on my dial gauge. And you come around to this point where you see this line. This is actually 11 thou under from this point. As you can see, we're at 11 thou under zero. And when you, when you bring it around to here, I mean, you can totally feel that. Hear it. 11 thousandths under machined on this pad. So when you're doing your measurements, you really just want to make sure that you check for stuff like this because it's going to totally throw you off. Because you said this is your zero point. Everything's 11 thousandths higher from here all the way around. I had talked to Quartermaster a couple times and they mentioned that um, this was a pretty new product for them and that maybe they haven't worked out all the kinks. I'm not super concerned about it, but just something that you might want to know. The other thing is when you buy these bell housings, you need to get a new bell housing to engine bolts. So they don't supply them. They supply ARP bolts for the bell housing to transmission, but the bell housing to engine original stock bolts, I think are 40 millimeter or 45. You have to run a 30. So I had to go to the parts store and buy those. But the other thing I want to mention is that this distance here is so tight. Let me get a light. If you look from the top side, I mean, you can barely fit the head of the bolt in there, much less a socket and everything. I don't know where I got these fancy bolts from. So these are stock from something. I'm not really sure what it was, but they're perfect because they have this nice long shoulder and then they're the right length. But this side is the one that's close. This side is the one that's like super duper tight. So let me take this out here real quick. Well, I don't know if it's the powder coat that was so thick that it made the bolt head just impossible to get in there, but I had to actually grind this one down. I, I put a flat in it. It doesn't seem to be engaging the flat because it's already so worn down, but just something to note, you're gonna need new bolts. So I went to the parts store. 
they are metric 10 by 1.5. So I got four of those, and then I had to use these weird shouldered bolts or with the spacers on them because I just, I literally couldn't get that head in there, much less a socket too. And this is a 15, that's a 17. Hopefully you have these. If you don't, you're gonna have to run, I don't know where you're gonna find a metric 10 with a 15 millimeter head, but that's, that's the biggest one you're gonna fit in there. So anyways, that's Quartermaster. We are moving on to the next step, which is putting the clutch on, and then we are going to bolt this guy up together for the first time. So it comes with all these nylon lock nuts. There's about 14 million of them plus bolts which, you know, that's what it's for. It's for explosions, so it's bomb-proof. I'm gonna have my boy out here today, and we'll get some work done. Thanks. Hey everyone, here's an update. So we got the uh, run out checked on the bell housing. Everything's good to go there. Back in spec, I Loctited uh, the set screws. The set screws are set down. So we cleaned off the flywheel. We torqued the flywheel bolts we got the pressure plate on everything's torqued there we're putting the bell housing on we're gonna get all that torqued i got logan here hello hello and we're gonna just get this thing together so the the process is going to be bell housing get that on get that torque down get all the bolts on it uh, i gotta figure out what the spec is for the 3 h bolts that hold the clamp together but once that's done the engine is ready to go into the car at this point i need to clean up all this junk and all the things on the floor because i can't get the cherry picker that far so that'll be the step after the bell housing. So you'll see that in the time lapse. Are you chilling? Chilling. All right, so here's an update. Uh, the passenger side header is in. And it clears the quartermaster, no problem. Got my whole hand in there, so that's great. The driver's side, a little different. So I actually couldn't get it from the top. I couldn't get it from the bottom. I had to take the steering shaft off, which is fine. Kind of a lot of things to disconnect, but is what it is. But now it's hitting right there, as you can see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the header off. I'm just going to dent that section a little bit because it's really not much. It's like quarter of an inch. It's almost, it's almost up in there, quarter inch or less, really, probably eighth. Um, and then we should be good. That that should do it. So there's a small update that you can't see on the time lapse. Uh, as I explained, we're going to have to dent the, the collector. Um, as you can see here, I just have put a couple marks. It's only the width of the, the bell housing and the sandwich plate, so it really shouldn't take a whole lot. Um, but here we go. It's going to be kind of loud. Ready? Mm-hmm. That should be enough. It only needed about a quarter. That's about a quarter. So what I'm gonna do is put it back up in there and just see how it is. Thanks. Okay, and after the second round of denting, we are fully seated. No gasket even, just in case. And here is the clearance. Clarence? Just for the record, I always have a single chip. Lunch is here. Welcome back. So it's a new day. Got quite a bit done. Last time I was out here, you know, we got uh, a lot of the front drive stuff put on. We have the coils on the passenger side that need to go back on. I was able to drill and set up the overflow. So the overflow used to be like right here. I put the catch can there, the tank, 
So that whole space is filled now. So what I did was I moved it to the other side of the, the shock tower. So there's a, a, a bulkhead pass through that you can see right there. And then what's gonna happen is there's another pass through right there. It's gonna come out of the radiator into that pass through, go up through the fender well, and then connect to that one and then go into the catch bottle. I have my condenser set up this way because it was set up via vintage air to just have bolts to go through the radiator support. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some rib nuts in there. Cause right now they're nuts and bolts and it's kind of a pain, especially when everything's in there. So I need to take this out anyway so that I can attach the power steering cooler to it. So when it's out, I'm just gonna drill the holes a little bit bigger and set it up for rib nuts. And then today, hopefully the blower goes on. Like I said, we get the passenger side coils done and there we go, there's an update.